Welcome back to Spank Ranch Garage. We're getting hit with a pretty good storm right now, which means all my outside work is on hold. Gives me some time to play with the buggy. So let's see what we can get into tonight. So we got a couple ways we can go tonight, but a lot of viewers have been asking about what I'm doing for axles. And let's let's just let's play around with this and see if there's something we can make happen. All right, so I think it's pretty self-explanatory or pretty obvious that we're going to go away from the Volkswagen rear wheel bearing setup just because it's physically very big and shortens your axle length and service intervals on it I'm not impressed with. Um, so we're going to go to a unit bearing setup with that. Here I've got a standard, you know, nothing special unit bearing. This is from a newer Subaru, with 2010 Subaru Outback. You know, this is a very easy to get, very cheap to get bearing. This bearing was like less than $30. The reason I wanted to use a Subaru wheel bearing is because we are running a Subaru Trans and hopefully run a Subaru axle. So they have these new axles that they came out with here. They're called extended travel axles. And these are actually a ball spline type axle. So we've got this special axle. Who makes it? Uh, Track Motive makes it, right? And the way these work is they've got normal CV joints on both sides. So typically uh, on a Subaru, you'll have what's called a tripod joint on the inside, which is a very long piece of cast steel. And then it's got these three grooves in it. And within those grooves is this yoke three-sided yoke with three bearings on it and it's called a tripod bearing or a tripod CV and what the tripod CV does is it allows you that the in and out travel that you need as the suspension compresses and then on the front wheel drive car where your steering does your turning here you have to have a lot of angle out of this outer CV well track motive has come out with these like heavy-duty Subaru axles and they make these for like the Tacoma and some other vehicles as well these are a standard CV on the inside and the outside, but they have a ball slip, uh, a ball slip yoke in here, essentially. So this compression and expansion that you're seeing is not actually in the CV, it's in a, essentially a slip yoke inside of here that's riding on ball bearings. While this idea is fantastic, um, a lot of people don't use this. So most of the buggy community is still running the, the Porsche 930 CV joints modified for more articulation and more travel. This idea uh, is not new. This has been around for years and years and years, but they were very, very expensive. And now that they make these Chinese ones, I wanna give it a shot and see if this could work in an off-road application. Some of the things I like about it, track motive, advertises 45 degree operating angle on the CVs, which is just insane. That is what they advertise. And they say this has almost two full inches of extension available in this ball slip section here. Honestly, it doesn't look like too bad of a CV quality wise, but you never know. Um, they do advertise thermoplastic boots. These boots seem very stiff to me. They say they prefer the stiffness because they're durable when rocks hit them. Um, I don't know if they're gonna hold up. But if only if the only thing I have to do is make new boots to make these work, that'd be pretty cool. On the contrary, is a standard CV joint like the Volkswagen would use right out of the box. And you can see that the plunge is compensated for right in the CV joint. And then, you know, the whole ball, cage, assembly, axle all kind of moves together. But these will not run at 45 degrees. I mean, these, these are type one axles rated to run it, I don't know. 13, 18 degrees, something like that. Nothing too crazy, but they do plunge and they do get the job done. Now, is two inches enough plunge for the suspension system I have designed? I don't know. I will figure that out as we go, but typically that's how these axles work and that's what I would be coming from. So hopefully this 2010 Subaru wheel bearing, yep, fits right on an older Subaru Outback axle. We look at axle length here, Unfortunately, I thought the axles were gonna to be too long. They're actually gonna to be too short. Um, you know, to keep my seam track width here. So we're gonna to have to play with that a little bit. Maybe a wheel spacer, maybe extend the axle. Uh, a couple options here. But being that these can operate at such extreme angles, we're really flexible in what we can do with our axle arrangement here. And if you remember from previous episodes, my axle center line is, is pretty far back from the center line 
of the actual tires. Let me take off this wheel and get a better look at what we're dealing with here. How's that make you feel for feeling uncomfortable? It looks crazy, but is it crazy? So hear me out for a second, right? The factory Volkswagen axle positions like right here on the front of that transaxle. People go ahead and put six by six arms on these things and move that six inches back and they stretch an axle from there to here. And it, it, it's fine, we're used to it. But seeing an axle doing the same thing but going forward plays with your head and this looks incredibly wrong but what i need to determine is is it okay i know you know immediate internet scientists will say oh i can't do that it's terrible it's gonna break whatever but is it actually okay i i think we need to talk about that the other thing that crosses my mind as a simple solution is like hey let's just extend the trailing arms back five inches and this all looks great you get even more suspension travel, everything's great. What makes a rail buggy such a sweet piece of off-road equipment is the fact that you take 90% of the weight and stick it right over the back axle. Right? That's what makes them shoot up hills and do all the things you see rail buggies doing. Otherwise, you know, if you keep pushing this weight forward and pushing the tires back, you end up with a two-wheel drive side by side and this thing won't get out of its own way. So we have to keep to our roots here and make sure that we're loading these rear tires correctly. That's why keeping this wheelbase where it is is preferred to me personally. Let's see if we can make this axle angle work and make our wheelbase work and everything else work. Another thing to consider is the actual full width of the buggy, outside of tire to outside of tire. I don't remember exactly what this was. I thought, just like looking at things on the internet, I was thinking, oh yeah, I'm gonna have to shrink down a Subaru axle. I was really expecting to have to cut one here and respline it and everything. I'm actually shocked to see that, you know, the suspension of this is narrow or is wider than a factory 2000 Subaru Forester. Unless there's some real big diff wheel bearing differences or something uh, on those cars that makes that different. But either way, now I got to determine, hey, do I want to build this this way with the width that the Subaru axle gives me? and then space it out to make it what it was? Or do I just wanna narrow the whole buggy to what the Subaru provides me? Or do I wanna extend the Subaru axle and come out to where I was before? There's really no best answer to that question. I don't think I have a stability problem left and right. And typically why people go wider on buggies is for a little bit of stability, but also just axle length and axle travel. And using the old school axles, you don't quite have the articulation that we are supposed to get with this Chinese turd. I might be okay with narrowing this thing two or three inches on either side, because ultimately it allows me to fit in more places in the woods. Maybe it's not so bad. I don't really think I have a rollover risk like you would in some other vehicles with a buggy because they are such low center of gravity. This is kind of what I'm thinking. Is it sustainable? Is it reliable? I don't know. I don't know of anyone else that's done it. And, uh, I don't have a lot of faith in these track motive axles. All right, so full droop, we're looking 28 and a half degrees. Now here's, here's the axle on Rock Auto through track motive. They say this is for extreme articulation for lifted vehicles. They actually advertise 47 degrees on these bad boys compared to the OE at 23 degrees, yada, yada, yada. And then what, they've got 40 millimeter sliding bar in the center here. So that's what they advertise. Uh, but another thing to keep in mind is this is only at full droop. So cresting a hill or jumping or on jack stands, that's when you see that 28 degrees. From here up, that angle only gets better. And with the Subaru Trans being so high up, I mean, this angle gets closer to zero as we bottom out. This, this is worst case scenario for the CV joints, what you're seeing here, but actual application and ride height, not so bad. So here's another thing, CV angles and the simplicity yet the confusion on the internet about them, right? 
So this CV obviously is angled forward a certain amount. And everyone says, oh my God, it's gonna wear out the CV, the whole buggy's gonna explode, you're gonna die, right? It's just the worst design ever, you cannot do this, no way. But then, you tell that same person, hey, what about if this was in line and this and my axle just droops like this? Oh, that's okay. What are you thinking with that? I don't understand. The, the center of the axle runs in a specific axis and it's only one simple angle that each CV is dealing with. There is no forward and back. The CV doesn't know where north, south, east, west is. This is no different than running a lifted Subaru down the road and it's gonna have, you know, maybe this axle comes out here and runs straight down, great. Well, this one runs a little bit forward. There's no difference, but it is something that people mentally think in their head because it's moving in two directions. The CV is doing twice the work and that is not the case. The CV is connecting A to B and there's only one degree and say, hey, 30 degrees here, 30 degrees here. See you later. Doesn't matter if that's going up, down, east, west, north, south, whatever. Anyway, with all my crying aside, the easy way to get this buggy running and go enjoy it is to literally cut from here down on the trailing arm, weld a nice thick piece of quarter inch plate in here, bolt the Subaru wheel bearing in, connect the axle, and throw some brakes on it and call it a day but I'm a total idiot and I am always striving to better myself and better everything I build. And I absolutely despise the bushings and things that are involved with the stock Volkswagen torsion tube. And I wanna get rid of this and replace this with a Heim joint. And by the time you do that, this and this, you might as well build a new trailing arm. These are all these poly bushings that I bought for the Volkswagen stuff. All sounded great in the moment, and they worked well for a little while, but now that the grease is washed out of them, they squeak like crazy, and they have a ton of stiction. And it's, it's very weird, like you set this thing down off the lift, and it sits at full droop until you lean on the back of it, then, oh, squeak, and then now everything's riding okay. It's just not ideal. I don't love it. I don't love these trailing arms. These have already been modified twice. Now it's like, I'm gonna cut them up for a third time. Should I even be doing this, or should I just make them from scratch? If I make them from scratch, it's gonna be, you know, that's a project. That's gonna delay the project even more. We've got a lot more than just axles to deal with here. I wanna do something a little different this time and see what you guys think before I actually make moves and start cutting this up. I'll put the video up for a couple days. Let me know in the comments if I'm just being ridiculous, if I'm being stupid, or you think this is a good way to go. I wanna know either way. Uh, you know, the engine adapter, I built all of that and then posted the video and some viewers had some insanely good comments that I wish I considered before I build it. And now it's like, man, I should rebuild this because I could have did it better because a couple guys gave me some really good advice on that. So let me know what you think about this whole situation. I'll give it a couple days and then I'll start the fabrication on the rear end here, get this actual situation handled. And then we're gonna move on with the rest of what it takes to make this happen. So thanks for watching Spank Ranch Garage. I will see you really soon.